Hello chess fans, thank you so much for being here again and uh, I want to start this video by thanking Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura for reacting to my videos. It was really, really, really nice that Hikaru Nakamura gave visibility to the studies that uh, I have made in order to try to find a way to understand the quality of the moves of a player and the consistency of the moves of a player uh, uh, in relation to his uh, rating, okay? What is the expected quality and consistency of the moves uh, by rating tier, okay? That's what my study is about. And uh, I'm really, really glad and happy that Hikaru Nakamura gave an enormous visibility to that. So that's already starting to pump up in many websites and many people are starting from there and trying to, you know, improve here or uh, make something different from here. And that's that's really, I feel that's really a good starting point for many, many good things to come. Okay, so I want to start this video by saying that. And also many people didn't uh, understand what is this, they, they are coming now, they are arriving now, what's going on, what's what was this study all about? So I've, I've written an article, so this is really um, uh, easy to understand by following this article here. I don't wanna, I don't wanna go through technical elements here, but uh, uh, you can, I, I have written an article when you, you can read all the scandal, what is this scandal is all about, uh, regarding the everybody suspect against uh, Hans Niemann, and not only Hans Niemann, but I think the main question is, uh, cheating in in chess. So that's what's that's the crisis we are living. Chess is living right now. Okay, uh, and uh, and uh, we are concerned about cheating in over the board chess. And is this possible with the current technologies or not? And how to identify and how to go further on the investigations in this case. So um, I, I I talk about this scandal, and I also uh, leave here the steps that I took in order to create a script and try to evaluate now the, the moves of many, many players and try to find the patterns and try to find this correlation between the quality of the moves, the consistency of the moves and the rating tier of a player, of a pro professional player. And I'm really, really happy uh, that uh, this study shows that many things can be done in this direction. And uh, and here you can see the results and all that stuff. So feel free to to, to read the article, okay? And uh, But that's not uh, what I want to, to show you uh, today. So first, I, I want to say uh, uh, just a few things from here. You know, some people was concerned about uh, the version of the engine that I used and the depth that I used uh, to make those studies. And I want to make it clear that it doesn't matter. Uh, the most important thing is for people to understand that we are not trying to find a correlation between any specific engine and the moves made by a player. That's ridiculous. You cannot, uh, you, you will never reach any, any you, you will reach nowhere doing that. Okay, that's not what this study is all about. This study is all about choosing an entity, an entity who is better than any chess player in the, any human <laughs> being chess player in the world. And this chess entity is gonna look to the moves of all top players and uh, understand how about the quality of that moves of those moves understand the consistency how consistency is that player when uh, during his games and uh, what should be expected in a professional chess uh, player career uh, regarding the quality of his moves and consistency of his moves in rating tiers that's what's all about it so uh, it doesn't matter if you're using Stockfish 15 or with neural networks or uh, in depth 20 or 30, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as the engine is better than any human being, it's capable to judge the quality of the move. Of course, if you if you use uh, 3, 500, uh, next year, the, the Lila Zero comes with a, a, a phenomenal technology and it goes to 4,100, uh, 4,000, 4,000 rating, uh, 4,800 rating. And then this is, uh, we need to change now every every uh, study to, 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 you don't need to. Keep keep with the 3, 500, keep with the 3, 3 200 engine. No problem, no problem. Okay, as long as Magnus Carlsen doesn't reach 3200 uh, 3, rating or any other player reach that level, that engine is still sufficient to judge the evaluation. That's what it's all about. We are not trying to find co correspondence between the player move and the engine move. We're trying only to find the quality of the moves 
okay, on average, and the variability of those moves, the consistency of that player, according to the unexpected expected numbers, according to his rating tier. That's what it's all about. I feel extremely, extremely full and happy to have published uh, that article and to have made my contribution to chess. And why have I done that? Why have I done that? Why, what, what do I have in common with Hikaru Nakamura and the Botes sisters and Eric Rosen and Livy Rosman and Rafael Chess here in Brazil and many other streamers around the world? What do you all have in common? Can you guess it? We love chess. We care about chess. And I can't speak for, for, for themselves, but I can speak for myself. And I say I'm co really concerned. I'm really concerned about chess. Really, not, 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 not chess between me and my friends and my family. That's, I'm not concerned. Okay, I'll bring people to my house and then we are going to play chess and have fun. And, and, that's, and that's enough. I'm, I'm not worried about this. I'm worried about chess as a sport competitive chess. I mean, because if we're, if we're getting uh, uh, cheaters over in over the board tournaments, then chess is over. Then chess is over. Competitive chess is over. And um, I think it was Tigran Petrosian who said, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't remember quite well what, what, which was the player that said that uh, um, uh, some, in chess, you know, the, the, the threat is more dangerous than the execution. So uh, it's, it's have more impact in a player, you know, the threats than the ex execution. And that's happening in chess right now, okay? So we are suspicious about things and that's been more harm harmful than it probably should be. Uh, but this needs to be dealed. Uh, and, and FIDE is responsible for trying to make chess a safe and fair sport for all. And I, if I can contribute to that, I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. And the study that I made, that I made now is being analyzed by uh, machine learning doctors by Google and uh, prof uh, professor of University of Stanford and Princeton and those guys, uh, which I highly admire. And um, I really hope they can get where, where I reached and, and go deeper and, and, and go and make brilliant and, and, and try to bring even more and more accurate Okay, studies. So if this is a starting point, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, and I think it is. And I think it is. And uh, so I'm, I feel full. I feel happy. And I'm pretty sure I'm not that the guy. I'm pretty sure that there are many, many professionals better than me. And and, and in going now in deeper, deeper in all those possibilities that are open now with this study. And I will be glad to see now, now to, and to pass. To pass now, now it's your turn. You you get the database. You know what I did. Now uh, Fide, you have more resources than I. Then you can make create a huge database, and uh, you can you know hire some big professionals, big shots, and and do uh, uh, extremely better than I did. I'll be happy to see that happen. I'll be really happy. And uh, so yeah, that that's that's what it's all about. And here are, are my uh, recommendations of uh, to Fide about. Uh, I think that uh, this is this is really something I want to I want to talk about. Okay, so we are all concerned about chess. Uh, we are all. Uh, uh, Magnus Carlsen is in hurt. Uh, uh, he's hurt. He's hurt. He, he, uh, when when a man like Magnus Carlsen, a professional, refuses to play and withdraw from a tournament, I I I really feel he's in pain. And not only him, but I I have seen many many top chess players really sad. On, on the, their feeling, they called the Cinque Food Cup a, a sad tournament, a sad tournament. I have friends, I am friend of many grandmasters, um, and I know many of them are sad. They are sad. They can't trust tournaments anymore. They can't tell if someone's cheating or not. But uh, certainly uh, we are seeing many strange things, things going on. So th th here are some propositions that I make to Fidi uh, to try to make chess uh, safe and fair sport. Not only this, I don't think that's what, what I'm going to propose here is the only thing that, that is needed. I'm pretty sure Fidi will find other ways and there are professionals from other areas. I'm just talking about data here, which is my uh, experience field. So, and, and regarding data, I think there are pr some propositions really nice uh, here for Fidi. And, uh, and the first of my proposition is to create an official database of the games. That's, it's really easy to do and 
And I think it's important because uh, when there's a tournament going on and after the tournament ends and then we went to, to watch the games and try to, oh, how was the game uh, between uh, those players? And then we need to, what do we do? We go through an online platform and then we find if they have streamed that game or then we don't find, we go to the another platform, then we go to chess games and we go to chess results and try to see if there is a game to download. It's really a mess. So uh, if, uh, it's, it would be really important for Fidi to create an official and trustable uh, database so we can see the games and not only see the games, but see and have the registers of the evaluations of every single move, of every single position. It's truly important. And second, they need to standardize the engine setup, the engine and also the setup of that engine uh, to register those CPLs, the centipole losses for every move in every game. So they need to use always the same, always the same engine and always the same setup. So we can have consistent results. They cannot use Stockfish 15 and next month 16, and then we'll have different results. And how do we deal with that? Again, we don't need, we don't need a 4,100 engine. Uh, 3,200 is enough. You wanna be on the safe side, you have resources, do 3,500. Uh, the, human, the humans are not, not close to that. So that would be enough for now and for centuries to come. Three, four centuries, five centuries, I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe thousand years. <laughs> maybe a human being will never reach 3,500. Uh, and if he reaches, then you can, of course, uh, change it all. But uh, you, you got the point. Uh, games need to match game annotations made by humans. This is truly important. So... Uh, many people, newcomers to chess, they see the, the, they are annotating games, the players are annotating games in a paper. And they say, come well, on, what's that? This is really old. This is ridiculous. The, the DGT board is already registering those moves. Why are they writing that? It's to keep traditions. It's not. Uh, it's more than ever, it will be important uh, to have this document. It's a document. Okay, it's a document. It's a signed document. And for legal purposes. So uh, it's truly important to keep that because if you play a tournament and then you go to the FIDE database, database and uh, your game is different there, for some reason they made a mistake, then you have a document and you can request FIDE to revise that and you have assigned the document, okay? But it's truly important. Uh, we definitely need to register the time spent per move Come on, this is the most important for me. This is the most important. Chess, that, that's, you need to understand, you're coming out to chess, you, you think it's all about the quality of your moves, right? It's not, it is not. Uh, many people feel like, uh, it's not fair, I lost that game, I was better in the position, but then, I'm, then I ran out of time and I lost. It's not fair. It, it is, it is fair because chess is all about the quality of moves that you make with the time that you have, with the resources that you have, and what are your resources? Your pieces, <laughs> your brain, and the clock, and the, and the time. <laughs> Those are the resources, okay? Uh, and you have to manage that. And if you are not good at managing time, you're not a good player. So a professional player needs to find good moves, good quality moves, have consistency, and do it with a good time management. Okay, so this is truly important because you may see a game when this guy is playing brilliantly and then he's going to make blunders. And okay, we can, we can explain that. We, uh, he, he spent a really huge amount of time and then he ran out of time and then he was blundering every move. So this can explain, for example, a uh, standard deviation, a high standard deviation. So time is truly, truly a key, key, key information. Uh, how can we do that, Raf? This is impossible. It's not viable. In order to do that, we have to do. We have to have professional chess boards, and they are really expensive. It's not going to be accessible for every country. I agree, but there is a cheaper solution. Fide can require to the chess manufacturers you you and and require that for official tournaments on Fide, uh, the chess clock uh, obey to those minimum requirements. And one of those requirements uh, must be that the chess clock. The source of all the information, the chess clock logs, registers, the timestamps, the, 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 the time records. That's all it. And somehow be able to communicate it with the server. 
uh, Wi-Fi, maybe you can stick up and drive with the number of your table that you're playing, uh, and then you deliver the, your spreadsheet and the pen drive for the arbiter with the number of your table, that's enough. Uh, maybe maybe you know, Wi-Fi is, I don't know how, but it doesn't look like a big deal. It doesn't look like currently it's gonna be very costly or something like that. It, it looks like a very, very simple solution. So the clock registers and lock the times and that is being registered for that official database together with the moves that we will process, process it to get the CPLs, that's it. And then finally make sure all the data is safe. You know, cyber attacks are already a reality. You don't want to have an attack where they can change the information of player. So make sure, just make sure you, uh, your database is following the highest uh, safety standard protocols and uh, maybe build it uh, upon a blockchain, I don't know. So that's, that's what are my uh, propositions to Fide. Again, uh, all that we are doing, that study that I made and the propositions that I'm doing now, uh, this is all about, this is all about uh, trying to find a way that uh, chess is, be, is, is, is more and more a safe sport and a fair sport. And, uh, and, I, and I hope I have contributed to, ha to that somehow. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much for your audience and see you next video. Bye.